way, I was trying to record some of the racket going out there this morning. We have some neighborhood crows who are very displeased because here's their baby sitting in here on my sea porch. This is Little Bird. A little bird came down out of one of those big cypress trees. We believe he blew down. And he's been hopping around. There he is. He's been hopping around uh, for two days. He was hopping around for two days before we thought we should pick him up. He wasn't flying. He wasn't even attempting to fly. Um, he was in some danger where he was. And we picked him up. And he's really young. He still had a lot of blue in his eyes. As you can see, I hope you can see, his feathers very, uh, not even grown in yet. So, um, he's a real sweetheart. And we're trying to get him strong so he can go join his little bird. Little bird. Here, little bird. Little bird. Here. Want some? Um, I'm very bad at this. He's a little, he's a little worried right now because of his... <laughs> Because of his, you have food on you. Because of his, here, come here. Come here. He's a little worried because of his, uh, whoops. Okay, I'm making, wait, I gotta get some food off of him. Here we go. You hungry? See how he opens his mouth. Come on, little bird. Open. Let's go. Little bird. Little bird. Here we go. I'm very bad at this camera. Little bird. Um, the plan is to just get him strong, keep him strong, so that he's able to fly, and then let him join, of course, his bird community. We have a big bird community here with Bird, if you remember Bird, he was part of. One more? Little Bird? He's very, he's wondering where his mom and dad went. They keep around, they're in the vicinity, you know, um, fall into him, he calls back. There we go. There we go. He calls back. So stay tuned. Okay, here you go, little bird. You hungry this morning? Hungry this morning? This is hard to do left-handed. <laughs> oh, it's mushy. Okay, we got. Here you go. Open. Let go. <laughs> go the other side. Hungry. You can't see any of that. You can't see any of that? Other side of what? Over here? You. Okay. Your hands in the way. Okay. Here we go. I know. Sure, it'd be nice if he was in front of the towel. If he what? In front of the towel over here. Oh, come here, little bird. Come here, little bird. so hard to hold because it's very wet yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry little bird. I'm not left handed so wait honey. Because he's watching for his mom. Mm -hmm. I'm pooping really. I'm pooping. This is very hard to feed. I'm tempted to cook him some chicken, but I don't want him to be... Well, they, they love chicken, but I don't want him to be dependent on chicken. These peas are easier. Come here. See, when he sees it here, if he wants it, he'll open his eyes. I mean, up his mouth. Go. <laughs> he likes my finger best of all. <laughs> How about one more? Because your finger is sweeter. 
Well, you got to put your finger way in there to get the reflex, the swallowing reflex. Because it's way in the back of the throat where he puts it. Okay, let me pick him up so we can get it better. Yeah, I know. I got a mess on him. Here, let me clean you off. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I was a better mother for people than birds. I want to get him up here. We can... See, he has nice strong wings. But... Is look at his tail, how short his tail is. We have like, what, what do you have, an inch? Yeah. Maybe two on his tail. I don't think you can see it, but his eyes are still very blue. No, I can't see his eyes. Yeah, very blue. Too much bright light behind him. And his mouth inside. Hold him over here. Let me try to give him a pee. See if he'll open his mouth. Here, we open your mouth? Come on, open. Hey, little bird, open. He opens his mouth. We can see very pink still inside. See, it's very pink. See that? Yep. <laughs> kind of. I don't know if you can see it or not. He's a very sweet little guy, or she. I'll switch sides. Okay. You're very sweet, aren't you? There's a good picture. Very sweet. Very sweet. Okay. Do you want to try some keys now? Want to try? Want to try? He doesn't like to eat when he's up like this. Did you put clean shavings in here? Yes. Do you want to sit in there? No, he likes to be out by the window. Because that's where his mom's going to be. Sorry. Now, do you want to pee? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the bees. I hope nobody's growing peas when he gets. Go that way. When he gets. Uh... Come on, little bird. Little bird. I think he's done for now. He eats a little bit really often. Eat like a bird. Eat all day. Yep. One more. One more. No. Okay, we'll be back. Greetings. Well, as you see, and if you have been following my channel, yes, here we go again. Um, if you are new to my channel, you may want to go back um, into some of my earlier videos and see I have two videos up on this channel that chronicle the tales of bird. Um, and I will put links below or whatever. I think I might, I think it would be best if I maybe just start a playlist uh, for those but anyway you can see from this from the beginning of the video that yes it has happened to us again a little different this time but we have again a young crow um, in residence that we're trying to help uh, what happened was um, uh, to make a long story short uh, the bird we believe you know, the bird's nest in these big, tall cypress trees between our property and my neighbors. And we had some pretty strong winds oh, several nights ago. And the following day, she was out and asked my husband if he had seen a baby crow anywhere, a little crow anywhere, that um, she thought she had seen a nest. I think she had found a nest that had come down from the tree. And uh, there's been a lot of activity a lot of activity around those trees, a lot of crow activity. And um, we had not seen it. We had not seen anything. But yesterday, or two days ago, I believe two days ago, I was out in the, uh, in the garden. My husband and I were working in the front garden, and he had to go off and get me. I was doing some, pulling some suckers from some tomatoes, and he went off to get a some, some, couple things. Uh, uh, across the street and um, so I was alone it was just me and my dog my young dog and uh, I really had to come to a standstill in my in my work so I was just sitting quietly and enjoying my tea and the crows I could see the crows um, a couple crows on either side of the cypress trees you know back up on Maria's roof 
and back on our fence and above our chicken your chicken yard and back and forth, flying back and forth, calling, calling, calling. And I heard another sound. I heard another crow call. And this crow, I could tell, was very young. It was almost more of a honk <laughs> than a than a caw, if you know what I'm talking about. And they would they would crow. And so um, I stood up and I walked. I walked to the fence to look to see if I could see anything. She has very, very uh, crowded vegetation there in her side yard here. And she has a very green thumb. She grows a million things. There's a million like trees and plots and pots of plants and trees and bushes and roses and all, you know, uh, in a very tight quarter, <laughs> very tight quarters. And um, I walked toward that area and I peered in and as I was coming closer to the area, the crows above were going nuts. They started to go nuts. Next thing you know, instead of two, there were three, there were four, they were circling everywhere. So I knew I was, there was something in there. So I eventually did peer in and see a young, what appeared to be a young fledgling hopping around and they're hopping, hopping. He was hopping from one area to another area to another area, just hopping around. He wasn't leaving. He was staying right there. So I thought, you know, I wanted to make sure he wasn't injured. I wanted to get another look, a better look. So I went in there and, and as I went in there, um, they came out and called to him, called to him. And they must have given him a warning for him to go and hide. And he went in behind some things that she had in the corner there. So I left well enough alone. I figured, well, you know, I would give her a heads up and, and tell her that the crow was in there. So when she came home, when she came, when we got her, she went in there and um, got the crow, picked him up and <laughs> handed him to me and said, uh, you want him? Because she didn't really, she didn't want to deal with him. She knew she was very involved when we had bird here two years ago. She was very involved with that and very interested. But, but she has a, she is of the mind we had a little difference of opinion there because she's of the mind that she wanted to try to keep it as a pet. And I'm like, you know, you really, that's not what, that's not what we do. We don't, we don't take something like that, an animal that is free like that living and try to keep it as a pet. That's just, it's first of all against the law, but that's not, it, you know, it's just not exactly my, uh, that's not my moral code. So anyway, this time she just gave it to me right away. I said, here, you take him. So, we brought him home. Unfortunately, we had a brooder. It has it is something that begins it begins as a brooder, and then we keep it we we modify it a little bit and keep it as a broody breaker <laughs> for chickens in case they go broody. We have to be able to remove them from their nest. And um, fortunately, our hen that is that it is specially designed for has not is not broody. She just has been in a period of a couple several weeks been broody and now she's over that and so the the broody breaker was empty <laughs> so now the broody breaker is holding home to little bird okay so i just thought you might be interested um but it did bring up a point a little point i wanted to make i don't want to get too wordy i've been criticized recently about being too long which i know i do get a little long but um people say to me all the time how does this keep happening to you why do these things happen to you I have a lot of these kind of experiences, not with crows necessarily. This is only the second crow that we've we've uh, cared for, but um, we have found all kinds of animals. Animals, you know, come to us all the time who are lost or are hurt or in need of some kind. We have had. I have a lot of um, a blog posts about it, but um, on several of my blogs. But you know, I I. Remember when Bird came to me, Bird even actually came to my door, my front door, and knocked on the door, which is a little odd. That is a little odd, I understand. But, you know, mostly, um, I think it happens to us because we're aware, because we're aware and we watch. You know, like I was sitting, if I would not have been sitting quietly in the garden just listening and have done that often and listened to the call of the crows, I wouldn't have noticed the difference between the call of a little bird and the call of the adult crows up in the trees, but I wouldn't have known any different. Um, I have a friend who actually lives up here in the high elevations, up in the up in the wooded areas, up in the mountains, who is out in the woods all the time, walking daily, 
and she was here spending the night and I live in a, a very suburban you know city lot here in uh, Orange County um, I have a lot of birds and a lot of <laughs> creatures around and she you know our windows are always open and she was here one morning listening and said well we, she was having her coffee in the morning and she said it's amazing but I'm hearing so many different kinds of sounds like birds making so many different kinds of sounds is that the same bird or is that different birds <laughs> and I said seriously you know <laughs> she's the same age nearly as I am and she didn't realize that different birds make different sounds like you know that's somebody who's really not paying attention when she's out walking she's in her head right she's walking but she's in her head she's not listening to or looking at what she sees um we've had cats literally give us kittens give us kittens um bring kittens to not just give birth in our property but bring us kittens when they were ready to leave them they wanted them to leave them we had the litter of kittens that we, the last litter of kittens that we raised here. Um, she showed us where they were. <laughs> this cat, which was a stray cat, we didn't know the cat. She showed us the bush. She sat with us and had them come out. We collected the kittens eventually as they got enough energy, nerve to come out. And the very next day, she came to the door and cried. We thought she was crying for the kittens that we had brought inside. Here she wanted us to follow her, and she led us to a wood, a pile of wood leaning against a fence, where one of her, the last of her kittens was was hiding behind, and she was unable to get that kitten out. She came to us and led us. Now, yes, that's very magical. That's a magical story. It's a really neat story. But I wonder how many cats or kit have come to other people's doors, <laughs> and then that scene. I wonder how many birds have fallen from nests in other people's yards and people have not noticed. I wonder how many people, you know, I don't know how many people have had a, an, a, a, a iguana crawl out of their pool and not notice, but, you know, I mean, I guess the fact that that iguana that we rescued out of the yard, I probably lived in the yard up in the tree a couple, a couple months or two before we found him even before my dogs noticed him. Uh, I guess that's proof that un all of us can be somewhat unaware. But this is what it means to be grounded and being in contact and being in connection with nature and being in connection with the elements. It is listening, it is watching. This is a form of meditation that is very important because this is the form of meditation instead of clearing your mind of anything you know, opening your mind to everything is what I call it. Opening your mind to everything. It is, um, I hear the crows. Did you hear the crows? They're looking for the bird, little bird. Um, it's opening your, opening your mind to everything, opening your senses. You know, when you go to the beach, and you know, there's two different people that go to the beach, right? There's the people... They go and sit and they bring their headphones and their their music and their headphones and they bring their book and they bring their sunglasses and they bring their hats and they sit they're all bundled up here under a towel and they're looking here, reading, reading, reading. And then there's a the person who comes and stands and walks, no shoes, maybe not even a towel. Bare feet on sand, feet in the water, face to the sun the wind blowing freely through their hair. Watching the birds, watching the gulls, watching the, you know, the waves. Feeling the, feeling the sand beneath their feet. Feeling the pull of the tide, feel the tide of the water, okay? You can see those are two uniquely different experiences. I think we can all agree on that. But I think this is the same kind of thing. You know, looking for magic around you, you know, it's, it's around you. It's everywhere you look, but you have to look. It's everywhere you see. It's everywhere you hear. So that's all I do. I think I think that's one of the differences. Yeah, I probably have a little sensitivity. I don't know. I know what to do with it. Now, speaking of that, I just want to say I'm going to make this disclaimer one more time. Every time any, I have this kind of a story, and particularly I see other people having these kind of stories, about a bird or being a bird or whatever. 
Um, usually if you see something like this, it's best to, you have to be able to assess the situation because mostly it's best to leave the animal alone. Like Bird, who came two years ago, was really old enough to be on his own. For some reason, he did not want to be. Did not want to be. <laughs> um, there were crows, other crows watching. But he was able to fly. He didn't wasn't able to fly very good, but he was able to fly enough to get up out of danger if he needed to. You know, to get up high on the trellis or get on the low branches of the trees. And, in, in, you know, he was here two weeks. And in that two weeks' time, he was then able to eventually join some other birds up higher. This little bird that is here right now uh, came from the nest too soon. This little bird, I could tell when I picked him up in the beginning, his eyes were still blue. His mouth was still very pink in the inside. No sign of black in the inside, which is a sign of age. And, but basically, the biggest part was his tail feathers. His tail feathers are only like an inch long, and they really need to be maybe you know, five inches long or something, four or five inches long before he's able to really fly and to get up into the where he needs to be and to find his own food. So he's not able to care for himself right now. He would be still dependent on his parents to bring him food had it not been for the nest being blown out of the tree. He, he can't get back up. They can't bring him back up to the tree. So there's the conundrum that he's in. He's got a mess. So he's vulnerable to attack on the ground. So I had to pick him up. I had to care for him. But I'm not going to keep him. It is not my intention to keep him as a pet. You know, I let Bird go, <laughs> as Bird did, and after two weeks, um, two years ago. And Bird is still very much in the community. I'm not sure which, which is Bird. But every once in a while, my husband says the same thing. We hear a bird, you know, there'll be one bird calling out. It seems to be calling out to us. And we say, hello, Bird. And... He seems to call out. I have great confidence that he's still around watching. I'm not, my husband said this morning he doesn't doubt for a minute that maybe <laughs> uh, Bird, maybe it was Bird that was alarming us, uh, you know, alerting us to the fact that little Bird was over there. Because they have, they apparently are supposed to have great um, loyalty and good memories, you know, of someone that's helped them. I don't know. But anyway, little Bird will be here until little Bird is big enough to fly. When little bird is big enough to take short flights, we'll be taking him outside. Right now, he would be vulnerable because he can't get up off the ground. Okay. So, his strong wings, though, I think it's, you know, he's going to be a good flyer. But so right now, he has to stay where he is. It's kind of sad. His parents are out there calling to him. He's calling to them all the time. And I really don't like keeping him in the cage. Um, I do have him in a, so that you know. The brooder itself, the broody breaker, whatever you want to call it, where he is being housed, is inside a large screened in, like I call it my seed porch. So it is also protected. He's very well protected from predators because it's designed to hold a chicken <laughs> that has to be taken out and kept. So um, he, he will be able to be moving around in there and he's not, he's not going to be in a little cage all the time. Um, but he's got to stay in there in that protected area until he's big enough to, to, to take care of himself to fly. So then, but eventually we're going to be taking him out and uh, encouraging him to get up out of the way himself. He needs to be able to do that in order to survive. It's no life. You wouldn't want to live your life in a cage and eat the a bird. So, especially when there's no reason for it. There's no reason for it. Anyway, I just thought you might enjoy this little experience that I'm having. And um, I welcome your comments, and I will keep you informed of Little Bird's progress. I thank you very much for watching, coming to my channel. I am good, the good wife, Rebecca, and I wish you blessings.